We're now going to learn a language called Lambda S, which is uh, short for mini racket. All right, so what we'll learn in today's videos, or a set of videos, is really how would one evaluate function declarations. So we've seen this informally, but now I want to give you a formal mathematical specification and an informal description of the algorithm so that you can implement it yourself, right? Um, as you know, the best way or a great way to learn, I don't know if it's the best way, but it's certainly a great way to learn is by doing, right? So what this course is all about is really teaching you various different features of programming languages, and we're going to learn them in full detail by implementing them. So how does one implement a programming language, right? So you've, there are basically two ways of doing it. There is one way where you which is what you learn here in this course 450, which is the interpreter. There's another way, which is the compiler, right? So what the interpreter is doing is it will execute the language as is. So it, the way you give meaning to a program is by executing it, right? So if you have, let's say, uh, as you saw in your first lesson, really, when you have addition and you have three plus five, uh, you can evaluate that and actually perform the computation by using whatever language you're using to implement that interpreter, right? So in this case, you're using Racket to um, to create an interpreter of, of a language called uh, Mini Racket, right, or Lambda S. Um, but these are two different languages, right? One is way more powerful than the other. One is m way more robust than the other. So the racket, what you're learning, the official racket, that's why they have different names, right? Lambda S is just like a baby racket, right? It's not really the full language. Um, but we don't have time for that, right? And nor it's that interesting for the sake of what this course intends to teach you. Um, so what the interpreter is doing is you will take a program and you will try you will execute it using whatever implementation language you're using right so it's going to take input and execute it produce output the compiler does something completely different what it does is it gives meaning to a program by converting it to another program okay so you give it a program written in c and it generates an equivalent program generated in assembly conventionally, right? But you could have other ways. There's like source-to-source -source compilers that could take, for instance, your, let's say your um, Racket program and generate JavaScript. Could do many things. And in fact, the, the last bit of this course, we're going to learn how to take JavaScript and generate Racket. Okay. So this would be a compiler, right? The interpreter, just to kind of make things distinguish, is you take a language and you execute it using the language you have that you are implementing it, right? Compiler is something written in whatever language, you don't really care about that right now. So it takes language A, generates language B, okay? So for either of those, you need a parser. What is a parser? Takes the source code, a text file, generates a structured representation of that source code, aka the abstract syntax tree, right? And then with the AST, you either interpret it or you compile it, okay? This course, we're learning about interpreters. Compilers are taught in CS451. Although you will learn how to write a small compiler, it's not a real compiler in all of its glory, okay? So, um, what else do we want to talk about interpreters? Uh, the basic idea of an interpreter is that you are, you can think of it, if you think about it in terms of like an imper imperative language, you have basically a loop going through all the instructions of your code. If you have something functional, you will have a recursive function that is recursively going through all the instructions of your code. It's basically the same idea. Um, but whether you think about uh, execution in terms of loops or recursive recursion um right so another thing i want to talk about is uh, just a, a few notes is like certain programming languages are known as compiled or interpret but they actually are one or the other or they might even be both so for instance python uh, although is you you say that python is an interpret language uh, 
it's true to a certain extent what happens is python takes your the source code and generates a low level representation of that code also known as the byte code and that is interpreted in a certain uh, like a a pseudo compile a pseudo processor like a pseudo cpu but it really is an interpreter right but it's not an interpreter of the source language python it's the, an interpreter of a low level representation of python java does the same thing you take a java you generate a class file the class file is what is being interpreted by the jdm okay for instance c does none of that you take c a c compiler will take well the usual the <laughs> most popular compilers that probably the way they use c was not being interpreted although there are interpreters of c the usual way is you take like gcc or clang you take a c file it generates assembly while generally it even uh, generates the machine code directly um there are some interpreters that do an additional step which is while you are interpreting the language therefore executing it you might take small bits of that language and compile it down to machine code that is known as just-in-time compilation and it can make your code really fast and, and indeed java is very famous for having a really good just-in-time compiler so this is executed by interpreter right so it's a compiler being executed inside an interpreter um, so in a in a bird's eye view of what's going to happen is your text file has lambda like this lambda with x uh, lambda x that returns x and you, and you're applying it to three and what's this is your text file so then you have some parser that generates let's say the s expression right and then what you're learning in homework three two sorry in homework two is to write code that takes this s expression and generates the ast right so you can think of this as the concrete syntax which has stuff that is not needed like the keyword lambda and then there's a step that generates actual data structures that represent the code so there we're not really interested in the symbol lambda what we really want is the list of arguments and the list of body and that's what you have here and then eventually what we want to generate is something that given an expression evaluates that and returns a number okay so actually executes it okay so in the next video we're going to focus on the syntax of our language the language that we're going to interpret